Figure King Magazine released their late February issue, Figure King Magazine number 265. And while most of the stuff within the magazine is nothing new, really, for our eyes in, in relation to what we were shown at Winter Wonder Fest 2020, it did give us some nice photo shoots of some of the stuff that we're really excited about. Now they showed some studio series stuff, they showed some movie stuff, they showed some Earthrise stuff. Nothing really too spectacular, but there's two masterpiece figures that we've already discussed and we got a nicer photo shoot of them. And is that of, of course, the MP50 Tigatron and the MP51 RC. Now let's start with Tigatron. Um, he looks spectacular. This new photo shoot just shows just how amazing he is. Uh, one of the poses that they showed was one of the scenes where uh, he's kind of like mourning Snowstalker's death and stuff, and he, he's freaking out. Like I, I love when they take the time to kind of reenact some of those famous mainframe scenes. It's something that we we rarely get to celebrate because. Unlike with the Generation 1 material, that's all 2D animation, and while we try to reenact what happened, you know, on the 2D platform with a three-dimensional kind of thing, at the end of the day, it's really hard to do. Where we had 3D models with Beast Wars, and having 3D action figures, and reenacting that is just surreal in itself, and it's it's almost like we could do one for one. I, I'll ne again, I'll never forget when that first Beast Wars, you know, Masterpiece Optimus Primal came out, and just me contemplating what the future is going to be uh, for Masterpiece, and this is a reminder yet again of just how great this uh, Tigatron is going to be. And the only thing is just me going like, man, like, I'm still curious how they're going to kind of tackle other stuff too. Like, where's that tail gun going to go? Because that was never really something in the show, uh, at least for him, you know, for Cheetor, he kind of had it in one episode. So I'm really curious about that. Probably we'll get more photo shoots as time progresses and we'll know. Now, MP51, let's jump into RC. Uh, the first thing I want to say off the bat that's really fascinating about the choice of poses with this photo shoot is whoever really did the uh, the poses is someone that kind of jumped into the lore of history of RC. Now, RC from an official merchandise pro um, stance, uh, obviously she didn't get any official toys for the longest time. But one of her very first pieces of official merchandise was that of the MC Axis model kit series. And it was also the first time we kind of got her first ever official uh, tech spec bio. And in a lot of ways, kind of her first ever box art. And the M the MC Axis model kits, I have the hers, I have the Rodimus one or the Hot Rod one. I never found the Alita one one, that was another one. And the art was done by Hidisoju uh, Hisogioka. And he did the art way back when, I'm going to post an image of it in the segment. And the, one of the poses here kind of is an homage to that old uh, piece of box art. And it's just me going like, man, like... You know what? For what everyone could say about what they don't like about the RC toy, I'll say this much. The way that the torso uh, has articulation, I was surprised because it kind of looks like the chest piece is kind of on a separate kind of thing from the torso. So you could see that you could really have a lot of, you know, I guess we'll call it like waist and hip articulation. At the end of the day, I like it. I like what I'm seeing here with the RC. I think that uh, it's it's going to be a very interesting figure when it comes out and when it goes into the hands of really, really good photographers within the Transformer fandom, uh, they're going to probably make it look like a million bucks, even more so than what Takara could do with their own professional uh, individuals that take photos. And I, again, I like it. I like it personally. Like there's there's just there's enough here going on. We see that she also again comes with her visor for you know to see if Cop, Cup and Hot Rod are still outside the city. You know it, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. I like what I see. It's definitely going to be something I'm going to pick up along with the Tigatron. Both of these two masterpieces have done a very good job. There's been some masterpieces in the past where I've been kind of hesitant. That I kind of been like oh I'll see what happens when it comes out. 
I know with um, with the Beast Wars ones, especially because I usually want to buy two of them, if I know for a fact that they're not going to be uh, a limited kind of release thing, I'll buy one usually on pre-order and then I'll find one down the line cheaper. Uh, thanks to against you know no no sponsorship here, but guys like Captured Prey have hooked me up many times in the past with good deals. Again, thanks again to Orson uh, for hooking me up with Cheetor for one example. Uh, they've had really good prices, and this isn't sponsored. This is just me saying like, hey, you know, credit where credits due. Some guys have really hooked me up with cheap masterpieces, and uh, given me a good opportunity to have both modes in display. Because with Beast Wars, how could you have just one? Uh, but yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. I really like what I see here. Uh, it solidifies my positive vibes for both of these, even though there's been some, some kind of controversial uh, dislike towards the Masterpiece RC. But I dig them both. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm liking what I see here. 